Hey, Mr. Clash here with another NDL No Dip League War Recap on behalf of Acid Rain, who, as you can see by the score in this one, copped an absolute shellacking from Jezmech or Yezmech. However you pronounce that. Oh, let's see. Are they a clan with a location? International? No, no, no. Okay. You just saw a little sneak peek of things to come there on the statistics, at least anyway, we'll get into it. Uh, essentially, the wall was won at the Town Hall 10 level. You can see here, uh, one Town Hall 11 left, and you can see they three-starred all the 11s. Uh, the Town Hall 10s made the difference in this one. They had a good lot of fresh hits, Town Hall 10s. I'd say almost half of their uh, Town Hall 10 hits were fresh triples. Uh, the other half were one or two scouts from a Town Hall 9 and then a fresh triple from a Town Hall 10. That is, it didn't take more than two Town Hall 10 attacks to triple the base. Scout with a 9, triple with a 10. And unbelievably, they also did some two-star Town Hall 9s onto Town Hall 11s, followed up by the next attack by Town Hall 11. Three star. So they gave Acid Rain an absolute shellacking. But as this is behalf on behalf of Acid Rain, we're going to enjoy the Acid Rain attacks. As I'm sure Yezmech will do their own recap and show their own attacks from their own clan. So let's get into this one. Um, for, oh, sorry. First cab off the rank. We need to get rid of the or not get rid of, announce the six-pack getters for this war. Uh, Andy, Town Hall 11, Andy, one six-pack. Obviously, you can only have one six-pack if <laughs> per village hollow. Uh, for Town Hall 10, we had a six-pack from Resurrection. Town Hall 9 six-packs were Mr. Blue Falcon and Heisenberg. I don't think there were any others. Uh, there were, I think there was only like 10. Town Hall Nines. Uh, so basically what happened was those those <laughs> those three took care of six, uh, two, four, six. Uh, other Town Hall Nines got cleared up. The other Town Hall Nines, three star, three star, three star. And rest of the Town Hall Nine attacks were used for, as scouts. So let's get into it. We're going to have a look at one, 11, two tens and two nines. Two nine attacks in this one. Okay, so here we go. This is uh, 24 balloons coming in this one. So it's kind of like a, well, it's, it's a laloon, isn't it? It's not really kind of like, it is. <laughs> it is a laloon. Nothing kinder about it. Okay, so you can see all the air defences at this bottom half of the base. So, and Inferno, Inferno, just to get a bit of a lay of the land. So Siege Machine coming in, got the poison. Maybe the poison spell missed the baby dragon by the look of it, but um, didn't didn't really matter too much. The, the Queen took care of that. And Siege Machine's about to go down to the Inferno. And boom, there it goes. Rage King. Warden's ability. Let's try and get that uh, Eagle out. I'm not sure if they actually get the Eagle out before the air attack gets launched. Take a couple of things down. A couple archers, things like that. 30% of the base down by the King Kill Squad already. The Eagle has gone down, so here comes the Balloon attack now. So get the Balloons down. Then a bit of a haste spell. Hounds, loons, more haste spell. Your first inferno is going down. Hounds popped. Uh, now they've just locked onto the, what have we got over there? The warden. Warden's gone down. Managed to get that other expo down, so that was pretty handy. And this expo looks like it's on the ground. Yeah, that expo's on the ground. Very handy. What's that, this one doing? No, that one looks like it's in the air. Okay, so one expo on the ground and one in the air. That's uh, of the ones that are left. Two haste spells left and a few minions. Here we go, a couple of balloons coming in at the top, and I think we're going to have a balloon on this one as well. Now remember, the bowlers did a double bounce, so this mortar should not really have too much health left on it, I don't think. Uh, probably one one drop will get it. Yep, there we go. So not too much health left on that mortar from the uh, bowlers bouncing their rocks around the place. I find it interesting, the bowlers seem to have an <laughs> unending supply of rocks that uh, just disappear. You don't see the debris of the rocks strewn around everywhere. That'd be an interesting thing. If the rock debris just piled up, you'd be able to see where the bowlers went. So that not nice little three-star from Eddie there. Let's go have a look at 
uh, two Town Hall 10s. All right, coming in with the hog attack on this one. Four bowlers up the sleeve, Siege Machine. Obviously, the thing with the Siege Machine is no matter where the Town Hall is, uh, really drawing a line out from here to here, isn't it? Coming anywhere within that sort of arc, that's where the Siege Machine is going to come in from. So trying to protect <laughs> against the Siege Machine, it's a very interesting idea. Do you put the Queen over, say, over this side? So that the Siege Machine can't be used. Maybe a couple of Infernos over here as well. So, you know, it's just making it hard. Or do you spread the Infernos out here? Do you do something different? Obviously, as, as gameplay keeps going on with the Siege Machine in use, uh, people experimenting on the best way to protect against the Siege Machine will start to find the bases adapt to the Siege Machine uh, to counter the power of the Siege Machine. And then, of course, people will change their attack a little bit to overcome the counter to the siege machine in the first place. So it's a nice little roundabout circle. Attackers change their attack and defenders change their base layouts to defend against the latest attacks. And around and around we go. But essentially the days of just dropping a whole heap of hogs in one corner, such as you might have had with Town Hall 9 before they did the uh, double bump, bomb thing on the hogs back in that day. And, uh, things have changed tremendously when they would be able to, be able to lure the heroes out of the base into a corner and take care of the heroes out there, all that sort of thing. That's long gone. So clean up wizard's already down. Nice job. Yep, good. Got a bit of it. It looks like a Valk down there. One hog left. Have a look where these hogs are going to go before dropping that hog. Do you drop it up here? Do you drop it down there? Okay, he's dropped it down the bottom there. It's because it looks like these hogs are going to be pathing around and mucking around up here. So that looks like that's going well. And we can just... Oh, look, it's only 20 seconds left. We'll just let the rest of the 20 seconds. Have a look at where the bombs were. The big bombs are all on the outside. Oh, actually, there's, uh, there's one on the inside there, isn't there? But uh, outside big bombs, obviously, trying to stop... Possibly a bow witch or something like that. Get a bit of damage done on the witches. Let's have a look at a town at the other town hall ten. All right, so this will be the other town hall ten. Uh, first, when you have a first look at it, obviously you can see expos are not maxed, bomb towers are not maxed, mortars are not maxed, and some of these cannons are level twelve instead of level thirteen. Very selective upgrade, I would say, probably designed to fit a certain tier level, considering that the heroes are 40, and uh, it would be able to certainly upgrade the weapons quicker than uh, 10 levels of hero levels each, I'd say. So, um, yes, just designed to fit a certain tier level as it as might be in the certain leagues. So you can walk in and say, yeah, but mine 10 or 10 is only a tier 2 or something like that. Uh, just by the selective upgrades. But anyway, here we go. We've got a Laloon attack coming in, Siege Machine coming in again. See how the Inferno Tower, let's just see when it locks on. Okay, well, that's really interesting. Part of that Siege Machine was already on the line, but the other part didn't. So that's uh, the front of the Siege Machine looks like it certainly didn't trigger. Uh, might have to look at that again a little bit later and... Um, or pause it or something like that. But uh, it certainly looked like the siege machine was over the line, but it was only part of it until it triggered the inferno. So it didn't trigger the inferno straight away. So 22 balloons, three more hounds to come, four haste spells, one rage, one heal. And just about all these, that little core section. Now you can see here, Nice little big chunk taken out of that base. So no matter what you do with the balloons coming in, if they come in from this side, yeah, so you can see that it's all just going to path around that nice little sort of C shape that uh, if you followed the channel for a while, you'll have recognized that C shape that I've mentioned in hog attacks and other balloon attacks as well. If the queen can get this sweeper down or the archers get that down, then that will help to keep the balloons on track. So there we go. One Rage, one Heal, and a Haste spell still to go. That Inferno Tower can't deal with that many balloons. A couple of big black bombs coming up. 
Minions dropped on the right hand side, get the cleanup started nice and early. The queen is still going. So that's the interesting thing. Queen is still going. She's about to take out this enemy king, I think. Oh, yeah, there he goes. And game over for the base. Like I said, it wasn't a fully maxed base. We'll just speed this up. We don't need to sit for half a minute of slow balloon cleanup. It wasn't a fully maxed base, but you still need to deal with all of the weapons and the uh, total DPS is still much, much higher than a Town Hall 9. It's not just a Town Hall 9 with Infernos. Not by a long shot. Okay, let's have a look at a couple of Town Hall 9 attacks now. Let's just dive straight in. No, it's a hog attack, as you can see. 20 hogs, three golems. Three golems, oh, look at that. Drop the wizard and uh, Troll Tesla had to drop the golem over there on that side. Obviously wanted to come in on this side anyway. Uh, just made it that little bit more difficult in as much as now had to drop the golem at that different angle. So that sort of a thing. So we've got three golems down. I think you've got three. Yeah, we've got three golems down already. Bowlers have come down. 20 hogs left. So there's going to get a good chunk of the base taken out of this. Enemy King's about to go down over here while he's trying to beat the golems. Uh, Golem, the wizards will take care of him. That Archer Tower, of course, will lock onto the Golemites, as you can see here. Well, in the middle, you've got the bowlers. They're going to wreak havoc. Going to carve out that nice little chunk of the base. Get some hogs coming, hog action coming in now. And once this expo goes down, you'll see where the hogs have nowhere le left to path, but all the way around here. Again, you've got that little sort of a C shape sort of taking place. So that makes it easier, easier to be able to predict where your hogs are going to go. Now you've seen me draw those little lines on the screen before where I just draw the lines from weapon to weapon to weapon. We're, we're just trying to explain something very quickly. It's not 100% precise because you can't predict totally where every hog's going to go in, it, in, in the full attack. But it gives, gives a rough idea. And that's all you need. You need a rough idea of where the hogs are going to go. I thought, just looking at this base before... Um, before the attack, I thought there was probably likely going to be possibly a Tesla or something in this corner. So that if you came at it with a witch base attack, you dropped a uh, golem here, a golem here. Whatever golem would go here it would then just start pathing around this way and it wouldn't want to go inside, even if you put the jump spell there. But of course, there was nothing there. So, and that's the whole point of these little things, just to keep you guessing is that a Tesla farm there in that corner or is it nothing? It turns out it was nothing. Let's just speed this up. We sit through 45 seconds of cleanup. And here we go. Everyone's slowly pathing around. Queen took a shortcut. <laughs> there was a wall that she could have shot there, but she didn't. Amazing. Let's have a look at the last town on mine attack. Alrighty, last one is a bit of a loon. Loony tunes. Okay, so I've got a Queen Walk Laloon coming in on this one. Minions, seven minions. I don't know. Is, is there a level to the number of minions before something stops being a queen, queen walk Lalunian or queen walk with Laloons and some minions and it becomes like a TDH? Is there some kind of rule in place that says this, this is a TDH, this is not a TDH? I think the easiest thing is to just call it a queen walk Lalunian. Uh, however way you cut it, all four air defences are on the right hand side. I thought that was interesting from a Queen Walk Laloon point of view, like uh, often you would say, well, if I'm going to Queen Walk the base, I want to move and, and take out the air defense. I don't want to start over here. I want to take go this way. But look, the Queen is going that way, so that's pretty fortuitous for the Queen. She's going to have to drop another raid spell, I think, to keep the Queen up. Yeah, there we go. The other raid spell's down. Enemy King's going to go down. Check out this wall breaker coming in. And little bomb. Well, oh, yep, good stuff. So that path is clear. Just get those wall breakers in before the wizard knocks down the king's pad and nice little hole for that wizard to just walk in there and take out this air defense while the queen's locked up onto the lava hand. So if you knew that it was the lava hand, you could possibly have done a, a silly lalo, but you would still have to have dealt with the queen. Uh, Expo on the queen there. Here we go. We've got the um, minions. Uh, they're not minions. They're lava pups. Hounds don't produce minions, they produce lava pups. So Queen will take care of those lava pups. That's looking pretty good. Still has the Queen's ability up the sleeve, so that's really interesting. The Queen's going to be able to nuke a whole lot, another air defense by the look of this. 
Okay, Lava Hound coming in. Hay Spell coming over. Watch the Queen's ability. Going to have to use it. Going to have to use it. There we go. Use the ability. Get that air defense down. Get the Lava Hound over to the other air defense. So all air defenses are tanked. It's very interesting to see how the pathing of the balloons went. So you just see those balloons over here. Then they've doubled back this way. Then these ones will come over that way. Then they're going to have to go back to where they just were. Lava Hounds have all popped now. Got a raid spell coming in. I think a few too many balloons. Got the minions coming down to clean up the trash. The queen, where is she? She's walking around the outside. She's still got the healers on her. She's getting healed right back up nicely. Wizard up the top, and that will be game over for the base. Another 20 seconds of cleanup. We'll just double speed that. Nice little attack from Martin with a queen walk Lalunian on their number 23. Okay, so let's have a look at the stats. <laughs> I don't think I want to have a look at the stats, to be honest, but we have to have a look at the stats. Okay, there we go. 40 attack, 48 attacks used, 49 used from the other side. 45-1, 48-1. Three attacks lost. These lost attacks, generally, you're going to be looking at scouting attacks. Three stars, 16 three stars versus 23. Now you saw the 111, the other three stars were all in the Town Hall 10s as I explained earlier. The Town Hall 10s on uh, Acid Rain side just got absolutely pummeled. 1.33 new stars per attack. Uh, look, what we saw in this previous one the, on a different war recap was this average destruction was just wrong. So I don't even know if we can use this average destruction down here. It's matches that one up there this time but uh, previously it didn't match up there so best most heroic attack was from Ditto and Leah on the other side so there you have it Acid Rain totally defeated by Yezmech or Jezmech whichever way you pronounce that in the welterweight no dip league so Hope you found something you can learn from this a type of attack or troop combos or something you can try in your own clan. Please leave the video a thumb up or let me know what you thought of the attacks. That's much appreciated. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video.